The next Methodism, The Faith Once Delivered, a Wesleyan Witness. Editors and Authors, Dr. Ryan N. Danker, General Editor, Dr. Jonathan Powers, Assisting Editor, Dr. Kevin Washington, Assisting Editor. And all the names and positions to the right are all of the other authors that um, contributed to this document and were present at the meeting. In January of 2022, over 50 Wesleyan scholars gathered in Alexandria, Virginia for the next Methodism Summit. The event was a time of worship, fellowship, and work. Unlike most academic gatherings, the next Methodism Summit was organized around working groups that convened over select topics and produced the main sections of the faith once delivered, a Wesleyan witness. The result of the summit is the text that you see before you a text meant to guide the theological trajectory of Methodism for the next century or more. It's nothing less than a robust affirmation of the historic Christian faith and the particular gifts of the Wesleyan movement within the larger church. The summit gathered scholars from across America and included participants from a number of Methodist, Anglican, Holiness, and Pentecostal denominations. Great effort was spent trying to gather international scholars from outside the U.S., but pandemic protocols were too difficult to overcome in the short amount of time we had to organize the summit. The next Methodism is an intentionally broad term that includes the heirs of the Wesley brothers in numerous denominational forms, but focuses on the future of Methodism in a time of upheaval. It was apparent to the scholars gathered at the summit that United Methodism, the largest of the Methodist branches, is entering a time of division. In such a time, this gathering was intended to provide a theological foundation steeped in scripture, the liturgical and tradition of the church, the liturgy and tradition of the church, and the emphasis of the Wesleyan revival. As scholars and leaders in the Wesleyan tradition, we cherish this tradition and want to ensure its continued growth, no matter what institutional forms might emerge. One aspect of the tradition was used to guide our work, the restoration of the image of God in humankind. This central theme runs throughout the text, its centrality marked by the capitalization of image throughout when referring to the divine image. Methodism is no stranger to division. The history of Methodism in the U.S., for example, is one of both division and growth. Some forms of Methodism have now entered a season of decline. Others are growing. The hope underlying this document is is that a vital and growing Methodism will be founded on the truth of the Christian faith as it has been received. We believe that Methodism was intended to find its secure footing in the faith once delivered, Jude 3, and only on this foundation can the experiential emphasis of the tradition be justified. The historic faith and the experience of the believer are not at odds with one another when experience is guided by wisdom of divine revelation and communal accountability. Or put differently, the spirit who inspired the scripture will not guide the believer away from a scriptural faith. The challenges faced by the Wesleyan family are not to be underestimated. For over two centuries, cultural, social, and political forces have tried to undermine the witness of the Wesleyan family around the world. At times, these forces have succeeded. The acceptance of slavery in the American context, the rise of Protestant liberalism in the West, and the various forms of fundamentalism has worked together, has worked against the evangelical witness of the Wesleyan movement. In many parts of the globe, the sacramental nature of the movement has been forgotten. In others, holiness of the heart and life has lost its central place in proclamation. In communities where respectability, uh, where respectability was more important than transformation, the Wesleyan system of intentional accountability has been sidelined as an historic relic. In the present day, some have replaced the transformed life with political activity, refusing to see that that transformation is the work of the Spirit that begins in the heart and then moves into society. But with all these challenges, the Spirit that drove John and Charles Wesley to preach across the British Isles, that inspired passionate laity such as Barbara Heck, Philip Embry, to evangelize the American colonies, the same Spirit that led Thomas Koch to give his life in order to spread the gospel in Asia, and that empowered missionaries in Africa and so many other places, is still with us and still inspiring Wesleyan Christians worldwide. They are inspired to preach scriptural holiness and to live out that message through lives of holy and sacrificial love. We hope and pray that the Spirit might use this work to inspire, lead, and drive us all to greater faithfulness.
to missionary zeal and to perfect love. The faith once delivered to Wesleyan Witness is divided into six sections. These sections were written by scholars and church leaders at the summit and edited by a team of scholars steeped in Wesleyan history and theology. The editing process aimed at two things. One, we wanted the text to be clear and accessible to a large audience. The document may be heavy at times given the topics covered, but the most accessible language was used as long as the meaning of the text was not undermined in the process. Second, the editors worked to bring the various voices of the text together to a more unified presentation. This was not an easy task given the number of people who worked on the text. You will notice shifts in style from time to time, but the text is readable and usable. Subsections have been added throughout the text. We believe that the message this work contains is useful for study in small groups, churches, or classrooms. Citations from Scripture and from the Wesley brothers are the most common quotations throughout the text. The biblical scholars at the summit chose the New Revised Standard Version 1989 as the standard biblical translation for the document. Additionally, a number of church fathers are referenced. It was thought best to limit the citations to foundational voices in order to highlight the timeless nature of the message. Theological and historical originality have been intentionally avoided. The document has continuous paragraph numbers throughout the document. The references to the faith once delivered can be made using section number and our paragraph number. It is the hope of the contributors and editors of the faith once delivered, a Wesleyan witness, that we have faithfully presented the faith as we have received it in God's self-revelation, in the creation, the calling of Israel, the covenant, and ultimately in Jesus of Nazareth, God made flesh. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we truly see who God is and what God has done for the world he loves. We believe that this faith has been handed on to us in the apostolic witness, in Scripture, and in the faithful tradition of the church. It was this faith that the Wesley brothers were taught in the Church of England, this faith that they held despite opposition, and this faith that they preached out of love for God and others. It is our hope that this message of wholeness, of love, and true freedom will be proclaimed by Wesleyan believers for centuries to come, that we may truly sing with those who have gone before. Thy nature, gracious Lord, impart. Come quickly from above. Write thy new name upon my heart, thy new best name of love. From Charles Wesley's, Oh, for a heart to praise my God.